Have you ever wondered how the large amount of genomic DNA in a eukaryotic cell is packaged? Well, let's dive into the world of eukaryotic chromosomes. Imagine a city where all the information needed to run it is stored in a central hub. That's essentially what a eukaryotic cell is like. The nucleus, a specialized organelle, is the city's hub, housing chromosomes that package the vast genomic DNA. Now, apart from the sex chromosomes, diploid eukaryotic organisms such as humans have two copies of each chromosome, one from mom and one from dad. Quite a family affair, isn't it? These chromosomes are not just DNA though, they are a complex of DNA and proteins. The proteins include histones and a group of others referred to as non-histone proteins. This DNA protein complex is known as chromatin. So, in essence, chromosomes are the storage units for DNA, containing both DNA and proteins. But how exactly does this packaging work? Chromosomes aren't just a jumble of DNA. They contain both DNA and protein, with histones being the most abundant protein. Now, you might be wondering, what are histones? Well, histones are proteins that help package the DNA in a compact, efficient manner. And there are five main types of histones. H1, H2A, H2B, H3, and H4. But it's not just histones in there. There are also many thousands of other proteins found in far less abundance, collectively known as non-histone proteins or NHPs. Together, these proteins, along with the DNA, form a complex called chromatin. Now, the DNA in a chromosome isn't just thrown in there haphazardly. It's a single linear, double-stranded molecule. In humans, the length of this DNA molecule can vary. The shortest one is about 1.6 centimeters, while the longest stretches to about 8.4 centimeters. But how does all this DNA fit inside a tiny nucleus? The answer lies in the packaging. The DNA is extensively packaged in the chromosome through three levels of folding involving nucleosomes, 30 nanometer filaments and radial loops, but we'll delve deeper into that in the next scenes. So, the DNA protein complex in the nucleus, known as chromatin, is the first step in understanding how DNA is packaged in chromosomes. Now let's talk about the first level of DNA packaging the nucleosomes. Picture a spool, around which threads are coiled neatly to maintain order and prevent tangling. In the world of chromosomes, histones are the spools and DNA is the thread. There are five main types of histones, H1, H2A, H2B, H3, and H4. These proteins are unique in their makeup, with about a quarter of their amino acids being lysine or arginine. This feature bestows upon histones a large number of positively charged amino acid side chains, making them very basic proteins. So how does DNA, the thread, interact with these histone spools? Well, DNA carries a negative charge due to its phosphate groups. Like opposite poles of magnets, the positively charged histones attract the negatively charged DNA, leading to a tight binding between the two. This is where the formation of nucleosomes comes in. In chromosomes, the ratio of DNA to histones by weight is approximately 1 to 1. This balance ensures that the DNA is efficiently packed around the histones forming nucleosomes. Each nucleosome consists of a segment of DNA wound around 8 histone proteins, like thread around a spool. And just like that, with the aid of histones, the long, winding DNA molecule is neatly packed into compact, orderly structures. These nucleosomes represent the first level of DNA packaging, providing the foundation for further compaction and organization within the chromosome. Nucleosomes, therefore, are the basic unit of DNA packaging, formed by the binding of chromosomal DNA to histones. Taking the packaging a step further, we have the 30 nanometers fiber. Now, let's delve into the intricacies of this scientific marvel. When nuclei are gently lysed, the chromatin reveals its form as a fiber with a diameter of about 30 nanometers. But how does it come into existence, you may ask? Well, the formation of this fiber is a testament to the wonderful dance of molecules. It involves the histone H1 molecule, a key player in this process. 
This molecule binds to the linker DNA of each nucleosome precisely at the point where it enters and exits the nucleosome. But the magic doesn't stop there. The histone H1 molecules then interact with each other like partners in an elegant molecular ballet. This interaction pulls the nucleosomes closer together, compacting the DNA even further into this unique structure known as the 30 nanometers fiber. This 30 nanometers fiber, formed by histone H1 molecules, provides a higher level of DNA packaging. Finally, we reach the highest level of DNA packaging, the radial loops. When histones are removed from chromosomes, what's left is a central fibrous structure known as the protein scaffold or nuclear matrix. This scaffold plays a crucial role in the final stage of DNA packaging. The 30 nanometers fiber, which we discussed earlier, attaches to multiple points on this protein scaffold, forming a series of radial loops. This efficient looping system allows the large quantity of DNA in a cell to be tightly packed within the confined space of a chromosome. It's an impressive feat of biological organization. Now, it's worth noting a key difference here. While the nuclear DNA forms these complex structures, the DNA in mitochondria and chloroplasts is a bit simpler. This DNA, which is separate from the nuclear DNA, consists of double-stranded circular molecules that resemble bacterial chromosomes. Through these three levels of packaging, the extensive genomic DNA in a eukaryotic cell is neatly packaged into chromosomes. So, what have we learned about eukaryotic chromosomes? We've delved into their intricate structure, revealing that they are composed of not just DNA, but also proteins, predominantly histones and non-histone proteins. This mixture of DNA and proteins forms a complex known as chromatin. We've also explored the remarkable process of DNA packaging. The first level of packaging involves the binding of chromosomal DNA to histones, forming nucleosomes. This is followed by the formation of a 30 nanometer fiber through interactions between histone H1 molecules and linker DNA. Finally, we've examined the concept of radial loops, where the 30 nanometer fiber attaches to the central protein scaffold in multiple locations, creating a series of loops. This extensive packaging process enables the vast amount of genomic DNA to fit within the confines of a eukaryotic cell's nucleus. And that's how the large amount of genomic DNA in a eukaryotic cell is neatly packaged into chromosomes. Amazing, isn't it?